Hello, and thank you for that overly generous introduction. Uh, faculty, staff, family and friends, esteemed live stream viewers, presumably you're at home also in your best uh, academic regalia. Us too. And of course, the class of 2017, let's give it up for the class. So very briefly about me, you just heard, my name is Tony Marlowe, I'm based out of New York, and I work in tech. Uh, I've worked in tech for, for about 15 years now, and it's been a big part of my job over that time to, to go to things like digital media marketing summits and conferences. These things, we, we often talk about the future, and, and for us, the future means things like what's happening with mobile devices. What about virtual reality, augmented reality, um, advertising trends? We're really trying to crystal ball what's coming next. So it's a little different to what we're going to do today, but I still want to have a little bit of a talk. And I think we should talk about the future, just not necessarily about the tech of the future. I want to talk about the world, and I want to talk about change. But before we do that, let's take one more moment to really recognize what you've achieved. You've made it graduates. Every single one of you has dedicated literally years of your life to get to this point right now. For many of you, this day represents uh, somewhat of a personal change. It might be a career upgrade. It might just be one of many milestones on what is a somewhat longer journey. But to get to today, I know many of you sacrificed a lot probably more than I'll ever know, um, but you did it. You learned, you changed, and it's good. All students and graduates of this innovative CSU global campus are beneficiaries of a system that's just a little more innovative than certainly I was used to. I think you'd say that, that you're better prepared for the modern workforce of, of today and, and life of tomorrow You've been acquiring new and useful skills that you might not have if you were just doing education the same way it's always been done. The broader world isn't doing things the same way it's always been done, and technological ad adoption is bringing down boundaries in important ways. And when I say that, I, I don't mean in, in any political way. It's actually in some pretty simple ways that we see these boundaries coming down. Take for me. My day today, I'll, I'll often spend at least half of my days on video conferences with people in other time zones, in other countries, sometimes multiple people on, simultaneously on the same video call from several continents. The, there's usually someone in their pajamas. Seriously, we have shared docs, collaborative systems. We do a better job more quickly and all of this helps us do better things together and it really wasn't that long ago where the thought of me having a call with someone in Shanghai and someone in London via video at the same time was the realm of science fiction. This is our every day. You were graduating at an inflection point in history like certainly I've never seen before. We're at a point of technological and cultural advancement that is profoundly altering how we work how we share, collaborate, how we communicate, how we live, how we form families in the core of who we are, the fabric of our being. The, p the pace of change, it's not slowing down, it's accelerating. And luckily for all of us, with these changes come great opportunities. Well, at least great opportunities for those of us that know to embrace change. And so if you take nothing else from what I'm gonna to say to you today, please take this, and that is, do not fear change. Embrace it. You should do everything in your power to make sure you're acutely aware that the status quo is far, far more scary than change ever could be. However, it's also important to note that when we talk about progress, the progress can be a bumpy ride too. We can't pretend that there won't be setbacks in, in work or hardships in life. This, this is a reality. And yet we know that because of the dreamers, because of the learners, the innovators, forward progress has been the hallmark of success. It's been this way for, for ages. 
the discovery of fire and the wheel, to medicine, space travel, to, to rainbow unicorn filters on your favorite social media app. Yeah, I see you. And I told you that earlier that I like to understand the science that underpins a lot of these trends that we observe. And I just told you that we might see some obstacles in the things that, uh, that you don't like in life. See some obstacles or things that you don't like in life rather. For me, one personal intersection of these two things came seven years ago when my mum had a stroke. I live in New York, I got the phone call, she's in Australia. That's the kind of phone call that, that you just don't forget. I packed quickly, I traveled quickly, I cried, I threw myself at work in the intensive care unit while she was in a coma. I also researched anything and everything I could that might help her. And it was in this research that I, I discovered someone who I now consider to be one of my personal intellectual heroes. I came across the work of this guy called V.S. Ramachandran. I talk about him any chance I get, I really am a big fan. And What's interesting about him, besides the fact that he's been called the Indiana Jones of neuroscience, is he's done work with stroke patients, and more specifically, he's learned how to bring them back to mobility. And the thing that Ramachandran did is he invented something called a mirror box, exactly as you might think it is, literally a box, a patient, a stroke patient will often be paralyzed on, on one side, as my mum was. A patient puts their hand in the box, there's a mirror on one side, they move the affected hand, looks like both hands are moving. He learned how to trick the brain to heal itself. And why this is relevant for us is what's really interesting when we put the patient under examination in fMRI, he didn't regenerate the broken part of the, the brain, the damaged part of the brain. What he did is he taught other parts of the brain to pick up the load. So the auditory cortex now picking up motor function. And the interesting thing that he discovered, they now call it neuroplasticity. And that literally means our brains have the power to change themselves. So, if you have any doubt about how well prepared you are for change, know that we're all literally bio-engineered for change. By the way, I should also say my mum came out of her coma, I did get her a mirror box and she's doing much better now. But back to you guys. So, What's interesting about you guys as CSU Global is it's not just that you're well educated within an innovative system or that you have neurobiology on your side, it's that you're also more exposed to the broader world than we've traditionally seen before. You're more exposed to other cultures. Statistically, you're more diverse. You have a healthy skepticism for conventional wisdom and you know how to walk your own path, often a technological path. You as degree holders, even have a healthy skepticism for the sources of information from which you learn, which I think is a great thing. So to me, you've got everything you could ever want to succeed and lead us into the challenge and change that is tomorrow. And as you do this, I've got a couple of suggestions. Do with them what you will. And hopefully you'll find these useful as you go out there and change the world. So firstly, when you hear someone reminiscing about how great things used to be, called BS, seriously, called BS. I guess it's kind of part of human nature, especially in times of change and uncertainty, to just want to look backwards and yearn for some reimagined past where everything was perfect. Fact, it wasn't perfect, and it probably never will be. So don't let this stop you from moving forward, go for it. Secondly, as you pursue your individual life missions, your respective life missions, don't forget that it is never too late to be the best version of yourself. I want to say that again. Really, please take this to heart. It is never too late to be the absolute best version of yourself. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone try and stop you. Just go for it. Yeah, you can applaud that. <laughs> Why not? Thirdly, a point on information. So some might say information is the most value com valuable commodity on earth right now. And today, most of us have a supercomputer in our pockets more powerful than 
literally more powerful than what was used to put man on the moon. What are you doing with yours? In fact, I might take a selfie with mine. Okay, I didn't plan that. Um, but our mobiles give us virtually instant access to more data, more information than at any other time in human history. All of this at the touch of a virtual button or a voice command. Uh, but with this prolific access to information, my advice for you is to discern between information and knowledge. Information is now abundant, but turning information into something meaningful, into something useful, that's the trick to unlocking its power. And lastly, be global. This current world of nations is more easily interconnected than ever before. Uh, I recently heard a former president talk about global supply chains that cut across mountains, oceans, and the sky. We travel, we, we have online media, we have online commerce that can render the imaginary national borders obsolete. This is a taste of the future, so set yourself up to be global. Don't be distracted by the sideshow. And on that point, I have to recount something I very recently heard um, from a guy called Shashi Tar Tarur. Some of you might know him. He's a prominent Indian politician. And he was, he was using the tragedy of Pr Princess Diana to make a point about how sometimes in the past we've not even realized how interconnected we are as a world. And so I'll quote him. He said, think of this. An English princess with a Welsh title leaves a French hotel with an Egyptian companion who was supplanted by a Pakistani. She gets into a German car with a Dutch engine that's driven by a Belgian chauffeur full of Scottish whiskey. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> they are chased by Italian paparazzi, Japanese scooters and uh, on Japanese scooters and motorbikes into a Swiss-built tunnel where they tragically crash. A rescue is attempted by an American doctor using Brazilian medicines and I guess now this whole anecdote is told to you by an Australian standing in front of you in Colorado, live streaming to the free world. <laughs> so be global. Uh, and actually, since I mentioned the live stream, I should mention it. I will pause for a moment and say a huge thank you to my very, very pregnant wife who is home in Brooklyn. Um, just hold on for a couple more hours. I am on the next flight home. Thank you for being so understanding. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty close to what I have for you. And I just say, the reason the world will be better tomorrow will be because you didn't look backward. It will be because you didn't fear the future and because you embraced change. You will seize the future and make it your own. And that's exactly why it's always people just like you that bring progress. Because you can't chase it down and so you, because you can chase it down and so you should. So I'll leave you with this. Be change, embrace it. Be knowledgeable, not just full of information. Be global and never dissuaded from this. And be the very best version for yourself. It's never too late for any of these things. Thank you.